Hi, V from examsuccess.org here where you can buy and sell study notes from top scorers so that you can ace your exams. Today I'll go through question 50 of the General Ability Test 1. This is a test that's publicly available as a sample test for the Selective High School Placement Test and it's available online on their website. Um, I've also put down, put below the link so that you can actually download the questions yourself and go through them. Okay, so why are we going through question 50? We'll go through this because it is a number type question um, and trying to find a pattern which holds, say, a group of three numbers together. Out of all the um, questions in the general ability test, this is, I guess, one of the more difficult ones in that the pattern isn't so obvious, but there is a way to actually, I guess, bring out that pattern and decipher um, it from all the information out there and I'll show you easy ways to go about it. Well that, that brings us on to the second point how to solve it. In 3.1 and 3.2 in my book General Ability to Reach for Exam Success which you can download off selectivetest.net this actually goes through in detail the various me methods that you can use um, and they're really easy and un to understand um, to come out to come up with finding out the patterns for number questions and other general ability type questions. And finally, after this, I'll sh give you three points to take away. Okay, let's move on to the question. This is question 50. I'll read it through and um, we'll go about answering the question whilst I highlight some of the difficulties and then um, make known what that pattern is that holds these three numbers here together. Okay, the numbers in each of the three brackets follow the same rule. Find the missing number. So first thing first, I would read the question. So I know that three brackets here. Two, three. Each one of these three numbers follow the similar rule follow a similar rule. So therefore you can apply whatever rule is in the first two to trying to find the last number here. Okay, how would you go about doing this? Now that we've un read and understood the question, the first part is looking at the numbers. First of all, what I would do is look at how the numbers are moving in absolute terms. So you've got a small number large number and then a small number. Small number, large number and small number. Small number, large number. This number here should be a small one. Okay? How do we know that the how do we think this last number relates to the first one? Well, there isn't really a relationship because 15 is larger than 10. However, 23 23 is smaller than 37. The first things, first things first, what I would do is I would think after I find out that the the relationship is small, medium, small, sorry, small, large, small, I would then think about what operations, so plus, minus, divide, multiply would be involved. So I'll change my pen colour here just to show you. Here I see that 50, whoops. 50 is a large number. So is 120. So therefore they must minus or divide the first number. Okay, so either or and or a combination of the two should apply. So 50 minus or divide a certain number would equal 10 or would come close and then apply a different number. That doesn't really make sense so I'll, I'll try and explain it a bit easier than that. So just say this. You've got 50 here. What number would you divide it by? which then you can apply to the 10 to then give 15. What I would do is because I know that 
a minus or divide is happening I would think about my options so what I would do is I'd figure out something like 50 divided by 2 what's that that's 25 and what happens then to get to 15 well obviously 25 minus 10 equals 15 now what we do is then we try it we um, apply it to the second group of numbers 120 divided by 2 equals 1 sorry is equals 60 then 60 less 37 is 23 and hence you have your answer what the pattern that holds all of these together is the second number divided by 2 minus first number and that's your pattern so what's the answer for the third group so you've got 56 divided by 2 let's do that now Fifty-six divided by two. Two divided by five divided by two is two. Carry the one. Two into sixteen now is eight. So twenty-eight. Then twenty-eight minus the first number being sixteen is what equals eight minus six is two. Then two minus one is one. So your answer is twelve. And that's your answer. So it is quite a simple thing, but there are things that you have to keep in mind. The first is actually finding what that pattern is, and that comes from looking at the actual number and how they actually relate to each other. And the easiest way to do that is look at, in absolute terms, whether it's small, large, small, 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 large, small, small, or whatever combination it is because that also gives you the hint into knowing is it divide multiply addition or subtraction again um, my book general ability for exam success to reach for exam success goes through this in detail um, and it's a really good um, strategy that you should learn for the exam so the answer to this is C okay so finally the three points to take with you first thing would be to re read the question. The general ability to reach for exam success book um, covers this in more detail and gives you strategies on how to go about this. Secondly, we need to look at how the numbers move. This was shown to be really important in actually finding out what that pattern was. Third, what operations would go together? Well, when we see that the second number is larger than the first number, it's likely that um, multiplication or division would be involved or if you actually consider the first number it would actually be something like multiplication and addition so it's um, first things first would be how the numbers move and then secondly what operations would go with how the numbers move and that would help you into finding out what that pattern is um, finally feel free to ask questions at helpmestudy at examsuccess.org um, we are posting up some really cool videos so um, just for the New South Wales Selective Schools Placement Exam so if you want to go onto our website at www.examsuccess.org sign up to our newsletter to, get, to be kept in the loop for new videos and new, new things that we have. Okay, well thank you and good luck with your exam.